Hello again, I'm Dean Karstens and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. In my last video, I talked about returning to the Scenic Ridge. This is a Scenic Ridge Railroad, something I haven't been looking at and working on for a couple of years. But in the last video, I upgraded this switch, showed you how to put an under table switch machine. And I'm continuing my series on switches and switch controllers. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you how I built this, this updated and improved switch control panel. In it, I include a capacitive discharge circuit. And today I'm going to talk about that and talk about capacitive discharge circuits in general. There are two big advantages to using a capacitive discharge circuit for your snap switches. First, it provides a more solid and reliable switch operation. It really snaps the switch. Second, it limits the final current. Atlas in their instructions says, when using a switch connected to a transformer, if you hold the operational button down for longer than a second or so, it can quickly burn out your switch machine. So here's a quick outline of today's video. First, I'm going to talk about snap switch actuators, what's available commercially. Second, I'm going to talk about the charging and discharging of a capacitor in an electronic circuit. Then I'll talk about how a capacitive discharge switch actuator circuit actually works. Then I'm going to show you how I built a test bed circuit. And finally, I'm going to give you the final circuit design for the capacitive discharge uh, switch machine controller. So the three wires go to the two coils. The center one is the common one between the two, and the red and green go to one or the other. Although the Atlas switch actuator comes with their remote switch, I don't like to use it. It's pretty ugly and uh, much too large. This is the Atlas switch actuator that I prefer. It sits under the table and is virtually invisible. Now I want to talk about capacitors. They're basically an electrical component that stores energy. So here's an example of a voltage charging up a, up a capacitor. In my example, I've got a 12 volt power supply. There's a charge resistor with a value of 50 ohms, and the capacitor has a value of 3000 microfarads. When the voltage is applied, the current flows through the resistor and charges up the capacitor. The charge on that is shown in the um, in the uh, diagram to the right that shows the voltage versus time. For an RC circuit like this, there's a time constant which is defined by multiplying the value of the resistor times the value of the capacitor, or RC. For our example, this comes out to 0.15 seconds. What that means is after 0.15 seconds, the capacitor will charge up to 63% of its charge. If you go to three times that, three times 0.15 seconds or 0.45 seconds, it charges up to 95%. And once you get to six RC con time constants, it goes to 99.8. So it never quite reaches the final value of 12 volts, but it approaches that exponentially. So here's an example of the capacitor discharging. When you close the momentary switch, the charge on the capacitor rapidly flows through the resistor, in our case 4 ohms, and discharges according to the curve down below. The RC time constant for that turns out to be 0 .02 sec 0 0.012 seconds, which is pretty fast. So you can see with a small resistor, this discharge happens very, very quickly. The final voltage never quite goes to zero because there's some charge coming in from the 12 volt power supply through the 50 ohm resistor, but it reaches the value shown on the slide. 
When you release the momentary switch, the charge on the capacitor again charges up to the maximum value. So now it's easy to see how a capacitive discharge circuit to control a switch machine really works. All we do is replace this, the momentary switch with one that has two directions, two poles. It's a double pole single throw switch. When you push it up, it activates the upper relay. When you push it down, it activates the lower one. So all you have to do is wait. So all you have to do is wait three or four time constants and you have a really good operational switch controller. So I'm going to put together a test setup for checking out my snap switches by using a variable power supply, a solderless breadboard, and some connecting wires, and an Atlas snap switch. Um, I'm also going to be using these thousand microfarad capacitors. Notice they have a minus. They have a polarity, so this side is negative. Uh, the long side is positive. So I'm going to use, I bought several of these. They run about a dollar a piece, so they're very cheap. And somewhere along the line, I got some 220 ohm resistors, which I'll use in the circuit. You might wonder why I'm using four resistors, four 220 ohm resistors in parallel. That's because I had them on hand. You have several choices. I want something on the order of 50 ohms. You can buy a 47 ohm resistor or a 56 ohm resistor. Or you can buy two 100 ohms, put those in parallel, and that gives you 50 ohms. But resistors comes, come in packs of 100 for about five and a half bucks. I happen to have the 220 ohm resistors on hand because I use those to light my LED, di uh, LED lights using a 12 volt supply. So I just went ahead and put four of those in parallel and used that. Now these solderless breadboards are pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon. They consist of five connectors, five holes, arranged in columns here and here. If you turn them over, I've pulled the backing off of this. You see the metal, these metal uh, connectors connect these five together and so on. And they're separate from this, from the other side. And as, as usual, I'm using these four conductor phone cable with a phone plug on the end. And as I always do, the white, the yellow and the black wires on the outside are the common. The red goes to one of the coils, the green goes to another. So this is what the solderless breadboard looks before I put the capacitors in place. The power comes in through the red wire, passes through the four resistors, goes over this jumper, and then the yellow wires carry it over to here. The green wire just is jumpered over here. I've set these up so one capacitor will go here, another one will go here, and a third one will go here. So now I'm putting the last capacitor in place. You see how I've bent the lead so they reach across. Negative goes in this direction. And there we have it. So now it's time to do some tests. So the first test I want to do is to see how this switch motor is fired directly from the power supply. So I've bypassed the resistors. The power goes directly over to the switch. And then working on this switch here. You see it's working it just fine. However, note, over an amp power, over an amp of current, and it dropped to eight volts. So it's pulling eight watts, which is a lot. 
I want to control two switches at the same time for this double crossover. I use this, con this uh, two to one connector to connect the two cables from, the, from each of the switches to one running to the controller. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in the other other switch. I really want these two switches to work together, so I plug the two together. And they do, but They're pulling 1.4 watts, 1.4 amps between them. So that's a lot of power. And if I were to hold this button down for any long period of time, say a few seconds, it would burn out one of the machines or maybe both. So that's one problem with this setup. So for my second test, I've removed the jumper, put back the resistor and put in one capacitor and I'm firing one switch with one capacitor here. And you see it is firing it. But let me put the second one in, Second, connect the second switch. So now both switches are connected. It's sort of working, but not very reliable. In fact, it's not moving that one. So let's put in a second capacitor. And they are working. But that one's still not going back and forth. So I'm going to put back the third capacitor. Making sure all are oriented with the negative leads in this, this position. And as you can see, it's now much more reliable. And with the two in the circuit, the current is 0.12 amps, so it's a lot less. So the power across the, the, the uh, coils is much less and probably safer. So here's the final circuit. All the components are soldered together on this uh, multi-point solder breadboard. The power comes in from the left with the green wire negative, the red, po red wire positive. And the power goes out of the right to the, switch, the switches controlling the uh, actuators. Polarity doesn't matter when you connect these two wires to your switch actuators. So here's what the other side looks like when everything was soldered together. Ignore the, ignore the short green wire in the center. 
that was an experiment that I was trying that uh, I didn't include in the final circuit. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Dean's N-Scale Trains. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.